second. But first of all, let's uh, get an introduction to our sofa guest this morning. This is um, what an interesting man, Ian Weaver, uh, who's a navigator with Tornadoes. Good morning, Ian. Good morning, Rod. You were a navigator with Tornadoes until you, uh, unfortunately, were involved in an air crash. That's right. Um, January 96 had a uh, mid-air collision just about over Billinghay sort of area. Uh, I was ejected out of that and badly injured as I came out, unfortunately. Now, interesting about you is you, you not only were you in the RAF, you were in the Navy as well. You flew with the Navy as well. That's right. Ten years before the mass, man and boy. Um, joined the Navy in 79, straight on to anti-submarine warfare helicopters, Sea Kings. Uh, did an exchange, uh, sorry, did a tour on WASP helicopters down in Endurance in Antarctica, which was fantastic. And then did an exchange with the Air Force at about the same time that Top Gun came out. And uh, I got the urge to go and uh, fly fast jets. You got the urge for need for speed. Absolutely. Yeah, well, well, why did you do that? Why did you go from the Navy to the RAF? Because uh, in the Navy there's no... Um, fast jet flying for backseaters, for navigators. Right. Uh, the Sea Harrier was the only thing we had, pilot only. So off to the Air Force, see what they could offer me. And they pulled me straight on to uh, Tornadoes. So that was great. And I went for my air crew selection, um, uh, and uh, they said to me, how do you feel about being a navigator? And I, I, I didn't know what to say. I said, well, I don't want to be a navigator, um, but what, what do they want to hear me say? So I just said, I just thought, well, be honest. I said, no, I don't want somebody else flying me, <laughs> fly me around the sky. Thank you very much. I want to be the guy in control. Mm. Anyway, I didn't get it. No. <laughs> <laughs> didn't get either. <laughs> well, that's right. Well, the navigator's the better job. The pilot is merely a taxi driver. He yeah. says alienating half of Lincolnshire. <laughs> well, you've got it's an important job, the navigator. It is, yeah. The navigator, uh, certainly in the tornado, is, is the guy uh, sort of in charge of the fighting of the aircraft. The pilot is very much part of, part of that as well. Yeah. Um, certainly uh, in the combat flying of the aircraft, it's the pilot with all the skills and the tricks. Yeah. But the navigator is doing the longer range stuff, sorting out the uh, tactical situation. Yeah. Now, uh, you're now a novelist. I'm now a novelist, yes. I've, uh, well, I've, I've had my first uh, book published. It, it's not actually in print yet, um, but it is edited by the publisher and everything else, so it's ready to go. And the remarkable thing about this is um, it's not that you're a novelist, it's not that... Uh, it's just simply the fact that you're here, because that accident um, was, was pretty nasty and you suffered some very serious injuries. In fact, one that is remarkable that you're actually here at all, which was you, you suffered a broken neck. That's right. Um, I saw, I broke my neck at the same place as Christopher Reeve, for instance. Yeah. Hangman's break. Um, I was very lucky that my spinal cord, which was damaged, wasn't broken. Um, but at the time, my, my best option given was uh, quadriplegic in a wheelchair on a ventilator because that's where the breathing is controlled as well. Uh, but here I am. You suffered brain damage as well. Yeah, so I had a, a bang on the head. Um, well, it, uh, the, the the front lobes were damaged, uh, not too badly, um, but they they do have their own little problems associated. Uh, if you make me laugh, you'll find that I won't be able to speak, so I can't laugh and no, speak at the no, same time. No so. danger of that on this program. <laughs> 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 All right. Good to talk to you this morning, Ian. Thank you. Stay with us. We're going to find out a bit more uh, about uh, my sofa guest this morning, Ian Weaver, former tornado navigator and uh, Sea King helicopter uh, navigator, and he's now um, a novelist. What an interesting chap. Uh, it's 12 minutes done. Let's find out what's happening on the roads now with Amanda. Traffic and travel from is doing. Excellent. Look forward to that. Judy Theobald, the mid-morning show from half past nine on BBC Radio Lincolnshire. Right, now my, my sofa guest this morning is a uh, fascinating chap, Ian Weaver from Louth. You're from Louth originally? From Louth originally. Uh, like yourself, uh, I was born to Air Force parents or service parents and uh, my dad was at RF Manby at the time. How did he feel when you went in the Navy? Uh, <laughs> not too bad. Uh, I think he was fairly proud of uh, the fact that I was following him into the services. Right. I, I just fancied going, sailing around the world, that sort of stuff. All the, all the things that boys think of. Yeah, and all the things that you could do at one time in the military, you know, there are all these fantastic sports and things that you could do. And I'm not so sure it's so easy now. No, it's not. I, um, 
I must admit, by the time I joined the Air Force in uh, 89, things were starting to change. Mm. Um, and I think by the time I left, although the circumstances of me leaving were wrong, um, I, I was ready to come out, I think. Yeah, yeah, I had the same um, sort of feeling, actually, at the age of 30. Anyway, um, the reason you left in the military, there was this, uh, this awful accident you had over there. What do you, what do you remember of that? Um, well, I don't remember getting up for work that morning. Don't remember getting in the aircraft, taking off or anything. Uh, in fact, the next thing I remember was probably two, three weeks later. Gosh, so you have no memory of it at all? No, completely blanked out. Um, from about, the last memory was three o'clock the morning of the accident, I went into my son who was having a nightmare, uh, settled him down, went into work, but I can't, I can't remember actually cycling into work or anything. And you know, you'd never have flashbacks or anything? No, 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 no post-traumatic stress or any, any of that, I got yeah. tested for all that, and, uh, but, but no, nothing. Absolutely. And in a way, and I suppose that's a blessing, isn't absolutely. it? Absolutely. I think uh, if I remembered it, it would have been about uh, half a second of fear followed by pain and then black. So I think I'm better off not remembering a thing. That must be a heck of a, 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 testimony, a testimony to the, the, the medics who actually treated you because, I mean, I would imagine the circumstances were that you'd have landed somewhere in Billinghay, the area, yep. with a, a, a seriously <coughs> injured and been found by people? Well... Uh, the whole story from the moment I ejected was amazing. I, I was injured coming out of the cockpit, basically. That's where most of my injuries occurred, they think. Uh, I landed in the middle of Digby Fen. I was spotted by uh, a little lad, eight years old, who was playing football in the yard. Uh, or, in fact, he saw the plane crash, caught his dad out, and his dad said, no, don't be silly. And uh, he was just going in when he saw two parachutes coming over his roof. And that was the other crew. And then um, he ran in, threw some clothes on, because it was early in the morning, uh, grabbed his car keys and a mobile phone, came out, and myself and my pilot were just going over his roof at that moment. And he uh, opened his sunroof on the car and followed us across the fields and ran. And uh, saved my life, basically. Now my hero. How did he save your life? Um, well, basically, he... he um, got to me. Uh, as I said, I was badly injured. He knew just enough, having seen uh, 999 the week before, he knew just enough to uh, get me breathing. My, I was actually face down in a molehill, believe it or not, landed, uh, so I couldn't breathe properly. But he, he freed my airways, uh, but at the same time supported my neck, wrapped a coat around my neck. Um, just in case I had a neck injury, he didn't know. And then he sat with me for about 20 minutes, uh, unconscious, sort of squeezing my hand, looking into one bright red eye that was open, staring at him, apparently. Gosh. John Phillips is his name, my hero. John Phillips. Yep, out on Digby Fan. this morning, John. Get in touch, let's reunite you. Oh, but I see him regularly. Do you? Yeah, yeah. We go out on the 10th of January every year. Do you? Oh, yeah. This was the Celebrate. 10th of January? 10th of January, 96. So every year you go out for a beer with Absolutely. the man who saved your life? Yep. What a wonderful story. Yeah. This is um, Ian Weaver, my sofa guest this morning, and uh, we're going to talk about your novel because okay. it's, it's, it's art imitating life or the other way around, you know? It's, it is, but it's bit of both. Um, I wrote the first part of it um, before my accident, and in fact the hero had a serious air crash and I had very similar injuries. Ended up in a coma as I did. And, uh, and you've that, actually written that I'd story written that. before it happened to you. I'm treating him a lot better in the sequel. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Gosh, Absolutely. Spooky. Yeah. Ian Weaver, my Sophie guest this morning, we'll talk more about his book and uh, his his life after the news at 9 o'clock with Barbara Stimson. In the meantime, Sarah Crowley's keeping an eye on things for us, weather-wise.